uh, held my position for five years. Um, and I miss her so much. I can't wait for her to come back. That's cool. We miss um, her <laughs> um, and and they they there were two kind of kinds of convenings, right? There were the national ones like the Encuentro and the Carnival, but then we also held regional ones. There was a regional convening in New York, uh, one in Seattle, Pacific Northwest, one in uh, Dallas, uh, and most recently the last one of that cycle was Miami, held in July, and. Um, something that we learned we learned quickly out of coming out of Seattle and have refined sort of the, the difference between a regional convening and a national one that are both under the auspices of the LTC um, is is learning how to I mean the way everything must prioritize the regional conversation mm -hmm. you know the folks um, are coming from those regions are sitting on on the steering committee um, there's still like the, the the amount that you have to really think about going deeply and letting the convening com come from the community rather than us bringing it to them yeah. um, was super important. And uh, so like everything from consider like the, the way that the invites go out uh, and or the, the emails that the partners that we choose to, to go with first um, to uh, the way that the calendar is set because in Seattle, um, was also the first time that the LTC was thinking about strategic planning. And so there was an in-person steering committee meeting that was planned. But what ended up happening was that the, the national uh, convening took up a giant slot on the calendar. And so the, the regional folks, we, we kind of brought them in. And then there was like a closed door. And then there was like going back into it. And over time, we, we figured out how to, to keep that balance better of letting continuing to hold the regional space um, and and taking advantage of bringing people together from the steering committee in person because a lot of our work is done virtually on zoom um, I'm fully remote I like take calls on trains and coffee shops and um, my kitchen everywhere and so um, yeah so over time I think refining all of those things, there was so much learning. We have a, a document of wisdom that just accumulates all of this uh, that Abigail set up. And so. Um, a document of wisdom. Yeah. 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 That's so good. Um, we're going to pass the mic to Idris, yeah. but I, I, I want to name like that Latinx theater commons in some way comes out of some really old school organizing traditions of Latinx communities. And I just personally feel like y'all are way ahead <laughs> sometimes, but because you're able to draw on those traditions, mm -hmm. those organizing traditions that are so um, historically powerful, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just a lot to learn from. Um, so please pass the mic to Idris, and we're wow. gonna, um, I know you're here to represent all the things. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm glad we're at evolution, because I don't have much history to rely upon. Um, I'm not sure the age of the organizations that I'm representing. Um, and uh, I'm not a member of any of them except for BTN and I think now the Black Theater Commons because uh, on the West Coast there's a bit of a disconnect mm -hmm. from um, a lot of the Black Theater organizations which exist either in the middle or on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joni spoke to the multiculturalism that we enjoy out here. I think has us uh, focusing a bit more on the work itself from project to project as opposed to looking at uh, coalition building. I think our only coalition here um, is ATTAIN, which just began as the Association of Theaters of African Descent. It's something that we could back on again. But again, BACCE is not a part of that either because we uh, tend to veer more into the queer community, so our alliances are more inside the queer community depending <coughs> on the work. And we just produced El Rio, which uh, was a bilingual Latinx production, and we are in the mission, so um, we are quite naturally uh, more focused on the project. Um, that, I think, needs to change, and uh, being one of the older traditions of, of theaters of color, black theater, um, we have a lot, I think, to contribute to each other. And I think that once uh, we're looking now for the West Coast co delegation to attend Black Theater Commons, which is happening in the summer, 
and the Black Theater Network, which is also happening uh, next summer. Um, I do know Black Theater Commons has its origins in August Wilson's essay, The Ground on Which I Stand, and um, that is one of the guiding documents that, uh, and uh, so he created that out of the Black Theater Commons at Dartmouth, and so the Commons is again returned to Dart Dartmouth last year, and will come again, I think they started in maybe 2016, they revi revitalized it. Mm -hmm. But again, on the West Coast, um, we don't even, uh, as a, en masse, attend the National Black Theater Festival, which is the largest organization, I think, of convening of people of color. I think the number went into the tens of thousands wow. the, uh, two wow. years ago, or three years ago now, and uh, Rotimi Ababiaga and I were there, and Rodessa Jones and Donna Lacey were there. We were the only people from Northern California that were there. Uh, there were a few people from Southern California that we hooked up with, but largely that gathering has happened on the East Coast, unbeknownst to a lot of black theater practitioners here. So we're just starting to wake up. But it's a great gathering, and I think a lot of the coalitions that we have have happened at night over drinks at that place. So I think one of the things, I, I, every time I see a festival of people of color, I get jealous. <laughs> the last theater commons, so I see Reorient, I'm like, ah, oh, we, need, we need that. We need so many more. And part of that yearning, I think, is, is just for space to be together, mm -hmm. to know who each other is, what we're working on. And because the National Black Theater Festival is seven days long, and is, people are there for the duration, it's Winston-Salem and there's quite nothing else to do, <laughs> that we have a lot of time to, to do coalition building. And um, so I wanted to give a shout out to Monica Andunu, who, I'm, who asked me to come here, who is uh, uh, who's, who's, uh, convening the BTC next year and um, has asked me to uh, help her identify a delegation from the West Coast so that we can become more involved. And I think we're at the place where uh, we wanna reinvent the wheel somewhat. Um, because I feel there, and Monica and I talked about this, that there are black people in all y'all's spaces, yes. right? So there are black Asians, there are black mm -hmm. Middle Easterners, mm -hmm. there are black Latinas. And, and they a lot of times end up in our space without those connections being made across culture. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that Monica at the Craft Institute has done, two things she's doing. One is the Black, black Vitality Commission is looking to bring together leaders of all these different black coalitions. And I've been a part of a few at uh, the August Wilson Center, uh, one at Amherst, one that was at Penn State. This was uh, about 10 or 15 years ago. and. Part of it is that we are we all went back to our little homes and and we never met again, mm -hmm. uh, or we subsumed into these other groups. So there can be a uh, there can be a um, too generous of a coalition. Like we have too many, and then we get spread out so thin, or one falls by the wayside and we jump on the other. Mm -hmm. And so the uh, Black Vitality Commission is looking to bring together the leadership and to create programs, actual programs around diaspora, which would include black, Latino, black, mm -hmm. native, black. And so there's actually, she told me there's an African diasporic state that has been created, of uh, uh, a state like a like Connecticut, <laughs> <laughs> that is gonna have like a governor and a full, so that, to, to, so that the diaspora has an actual home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to call their own, which is really something amazing. Yeah. And then the other thing that she's looking at is cross-cultural collaboration. So there, the, one of the reasons we gather is to protect our work, is to protect mm -hmm. our work. And um, I would say here in the Bay Area, a lot of black plays get done. But we have one historically black theater Two, actually one, which is Lorraine Hansberry, which lost their leadership about a decade ago and has been struggling ever since. And a little known theater called the Lower Bottom Players, mm -hmm. run by Ayodele and Zynga mm -hmm. in Oakland, in West Oakland, who has created the, done the entire August Wilson cycle oh, twice, I believe. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, so, the, and then my theater company 
And so we call ourselves black also. Mm -hmm. So I think um, black yeah, has to do with Shakespeare. Yeah. Oh, African American Shakespeare. Thank you, African American Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are the four companies that, that exist here on the West Coast, <coughs> so connecting to the larger, both to the larger black networks, but also this idea of cross-cultural collaboration and the protection of the work. And so there's been a lot of controversy about black work being done at white theaters here. Mm -hmm. And um, so why not entrust the work cross-culturally? Why not entrust the black work to the Latin theater company? Why not entrust the work to, uh, to Mina? Why not Mina entrust the work to uh, BTC? So that we have some some kind of uh, community uh, agreements and principles that we're upholding and we don't have to create this kind of energy around uh, white theater companies receiving funding, receiving audiences or, uh, you know, um, all the kind of what we call vampirism that mm -hmm. tends to happen intentionally or not mm -hmm. around the the structures that are here and how we have to work within them. And so uh, Craft Institute is creating a rolling premiere and is looking actually for work like El Rio, which has Adetard, a black Seminole character, is uh, leading a Guatemalan refugee across the border and is written almost entirely in Spanish and has some Gullah words and, and um, Oh, I'm forgetting the Guatemalan language that the name of it, but it had it was it was trilingual Maya, actually. Chechi. Yeah, Chechi. Chechi. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and so um, we embarked on that work because white theaters weren't able to sort of understand. They kept wanting to make the corridor into like uh, five or six characters when it was really clearly a tradition that. As an African American, I understood that El Rio, the river, was embodying these characters and was moving the action. And, and uh, the number of theaters that Andrew Saito, the playwright, sent it to, kept trying to collapse it and fix it into a Western, a more Westernized structure. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it ended up in my lab because I kept saying, it's perfect play, just the way it is, it's perfect, let's just do it. <laughs> and he said, are you sure? Because like so-and-so down in San Diego Rep said this. And so, so I think um, that this rolling premier network might be a, a great place at the Craft Institute to start to look at how we can um, be more inclusive in our interpretations and even in how we're perceiving the projects that we're perceiving across each other's culture. This is great. You said so much, Idris. This okay. is so fabulous. Cool. I want to just, whew, I just, no, I want to I lift up some things. First of all, going back to some of the challenges that you named at the beginning about how, particularly with black theater, the regional differences are really big because yeah. the history, the regional histories mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of African Americans in this country are so different mm -hmm. in different parts of the country, yeah. right? Yeah. And, um, and so it was really interesting to hear you talk about California and how the experience here is different, but also the kind of regional isolation that can happen and how we all, we all need to be mindful of that if we're trying to create truly national coalitions. How do, how do we do that that really is accessible and inclusive to everyone, right? And I think Kata's had that um, challenge as well. Um, but then that, but you, you quite organically led us into the next part of the conversation that I wanna have, which is about how do we, across identity groups, across networks, support each other's work? Because you quite rightfully said that you know what often happens with work by artists of color is that kind of predominantly white institutions are still the center of all the exchange, of all the rolling premieres, of all the major funding that goes into them of, you know, quote unquote audience development initiatives, yeah. right? Yeah. And all that and what if we just, you know, to quote Ingrid Yuakyongo, just move the center. Yeah. 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 Move the center. Yeah. Yeah. And we all start to work with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this was exactly the idea that Monica and I were talking about is that then uh, those who were <coughs> previously at the center being on the edge of all this work would have to come through us. Mm -hmm. 
mm. to create the work. And um, I also want to just say that the Vitality, the Black Vitality Commission is also looking across platforms. And so the leaders that come together are also film directors and uh, people who are creating on YouTube and creating in other, uh, on other platforms because there's a crossover and there's also more money sometimes mm -hmm. on the film end. So how do we create these projects that go from theater to film without losing that continuity, mm -hmm. without losing that connection and without losing that cultural strength mm -hmm. that was created inside the community building space that theater is. Once it gets to a screenwriter's hands or in Hollywood, how about if that person comes also out of our coalition? Mm -hmm. And we're able to also create alternative revenue streams through that process also. Mm -hmm. Wow, resources. That's awesome. Yeah, go ahead and clap. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna uh, bring Armando and Joan back into the conversation around this, uh, this question of how are we gonna work together across uh, networks and identity groups mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, yeah. and understanding that we're already there, right? We're, like we're, already, yeah. we're already in each other's communities, yeah. right? Identity is so complex in I the think 21st it's century. Really here. Oh wait, use the mic. Oh sorry. I, I <laughs> really here. I don't know uh, how much it's like that uh, on the, but here. Um, with Campo Santo, I work with Campo Santo, Joan works at Prava. Like we, we are, uh, out of maybe just how small we are maybe, that we all know each other and we all love to work together, that we tend to create projects mm -hmm. that cross each other's culture mm -hmm. in, in an effort to work with that person we want to work with. Yeah. But it also is part of our strength. We have limited resources, we have limited spaces, mm -hmm. and so, um, uh, and we were born together, Campo Santo and BECC were born together out of Intersection for the Arts and we have the same mothers and fathers and grandfathers and Renee Yanez is the godfather of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we sort of uh, are naturally in the house together a lot with each other. And so I think that we naturally do that. How, how can we help that become a national movement? Mm -hmm. How can that become the way we work nationally, and I think this is what the importance of uh, why Monica wanted a West Coast delegation to be at BTC was to talk about how, how the project itself, the project that you choose, is actually the beginning of creating that cross-cultural, yeah. Yeah, I, when I think of cross-culture, I think of Leslie Ishii and another yes. amazing human, because yes. um, her approach is so, intentional. Um, I, I I remember her coming to, <coughs> she comes to as many LTC convenings as she can, yes. um, and walks into the room uh, caring and being aware of, of the way that she's, when she's visiting in a space, how that's not a neutral act, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how to, like that balance or that awareness of the taking and the, and the contrib contribution. Um, and so I just want to raise that up, and I will certainly, like, definitely be at Kata in Hawaii. Yes. And um, mm -hmm. we are we're trying to figure out how to how to get the finances to send a small contingent of LTC folks too. Um, Little so, plug: we want to yeah. have a conversation about statehood with some Puerto Rican folks mm -hmm. and Hawaiian folks. Mm -hmm. So there are definitely things that like across our communities we can be talking, need to be talking about, and learning from each other on, for sure. Um, I wanted to um, say the, um, you know, the, the, what you were talking about in terms of like the kind of co-creation and holding each other's work and trusting each other with mm -hmm. that work. I think it is a function of like the, you know, a lot of the West Coast is so multicultural. And so a lot of, our organizations and artists have been working together, you know, across those like kind of, I don't, I wouldn't even say cultural divides, but the commonalities. Mm -hmm. that the intersectionality. Mm -hmm. The intersectionality, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and so it, it comes more as a natural, you know, it feels more natural here. And so, but I love the, the really 
the idea of formalizing that kind of a network in terms of really starting at the uh, artistic basis for it, you know, which is the work itself. Because I think a lot of times in coalition building, we get into these conference settings and we're so, we do have to keep our, you know, <coughs> minds like on building infrastructure and what are those structures, but at the heart of it, we're, we're all here because we love the work. Yes. We're all here because we're theater makers or we're, we, we love theater and this kind of multidisciplinary, like, you know, performance <coughs> work um, that we all support. And because we, we think that, that artists and, and um, culture um, are, have this intrinsic value in like our lives. Mm -hmm. so, so I think starting back at like the, you know, doing the work is a really beautiful way of just like showing rather than telling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yay. Um, I want to I I open it up oh, in just a moment to uh, audience questions and conversation. Um, but so I would like to know for in this context of us here in the MENA community being kind of at the beginning of network or coalition or alliance or consortium or we're still trying to figure out what it is. Commons. Building the commons, yes. Um, what, <coughs> from the point of view of the networks that you've been connected with, like what advice would you offer to us about uh, you know, the chat both the coming from the challenges and also the successes, like what are the things that you would say, oh yeah, definitely do this or definitely don't do that? <laughs> like some um, you know, some advice that you could give about this work of network or coalition building. Um, I think it's important to have off time, time for people to speak and to meet each other and to just like eat food and have cocktails and talk. That's really important because sometimes we go to conferences and every day is packed with a workshop or something you want to go to. And I don't mean just lunch, but like an afternoon mm -hmm. of mingling time. I feel like that's really important. And I think being really clear and uh, about, I like that you have closed sessions. I think that's really important mm -hmm. to be able to speak openly. And then I think also to the open sessions to really see who's in the room and recognize um, the potential of the people who are in the room who may not look like what you thought yes. should be in that room. Yes. But that, you know, why are you here and what's your interest? I, I say that out of the idea too that black, we open the door to whoever is interested in black people. And if you have a real interest, because the work is gonna submerge you in that already. And so you're gonna be a little more blacker when you leave the room than you were when you came. <laughs> and, 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 and as if we really know what that is, right, right. but we have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know when it walks through, it's collard greens and cornbread, we know what that is. <laughs> but that bit, but expansiveness and, and um, expanding and, yeah, keeping that. That's so interesting. Keeping it, that I said two very contradictory things, but you get it. <laughs> the theater artist can be ambiguity. Early on, our, the LTC convenings were notoriously like jam-packed when we, because the Latino Theater Company produced the Encuentro Theater Festival, it was four weeks long. It had 19 theater companies. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Concurrently, all of the companies were mixed into 10 labs. So talking about getting to know each other through the work, they were exchanging artistic creation methodologies with each other in those labs. And in the, I think it was the third weekend, the, there was a weekend in the middle of the festival when all of the companies, or mostly all of the companies, were gonna be there because there were some that were just there for the first two weeks, some just for the second two weeks. Um, but we, we, at the LTC, brought in, I think it was like 60 something folks to convene at the festival. So on top of the theater companies and all the artists that were part of theater companies, we brought in more folks and the schedule flipped around so that everybody could see all of the shows in three days. 
Um, plus parties, so we did get those in. Plus lunch, and then John Francisco Coffee was really generous and kept everybody caffeinated. But it was like did I sleep? I'm just <laughs> no, uh, very little. And so the yes, the programmed time together, but then also the unprogrammed yeah. time when folks can choose their own adventure and figure out who to have that drink with or can take time for themselves. Because it also becomes then a question of accessibility, yeah. right? Those marathon days and being right, in yes. dark spaces and with a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, so keeping all of that in mind, we we rev the engine really hard and but then figured figured out to because <laughs> we're so hungry to yeah. be yeah. in these spaces yeah. with each other. We want to squeeze as much time, but yeah. then also honoring our human bodies. <laughs> 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 The intro had people on fire all over the West Coast when it was in LA. Yeah. Everybody wanted to come. We were all figuring out, brushing up on our Spanish. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get in that room. Yeah. Jody, you want to talk about Ghana? Um, yes, yes, and yes, with all the same things, which is um, it, it's true. Like when you get into that space and when you have the privilege of, of getting to design that space and having all of this um, intention in the space, it's like, it's hard not to program every single minute. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is so precious to have the time together, mm -hmm. to be in rooms where uh, it, is, it is just us. <coughs> like people of color. It, it's like mm -hmm. for a lot of the younger folks who come into the, the kind of conference setting, and mm -hmm. it's honestly, they're saying, this is the first time I've been in this type of space. Mm -hmm. And and so to know that that's, that's something that we take very seriously and, and want to make fun and you know beneficial to folks. But there also is that thing about understanding the culture of the place that you're in, mm -hmm. uh, which we want to leave time, leave space, leave ritual for mm -hmm. uh, if people want to engage in that. And so I think that's a really important thing that, that we like to do within Kata is when we are in the place, it's like really honoring uh, you know, what, what, what is there that, that probably is unseen by most people. And so uh, uh, I think that makes our time together really special. Mm -hmm. And we can also, with the spaces that we're in, that we, it, you know, it is, there's something that is of us that is left behind mm -hmm. um, and that we can continue to build on. So mm -hmm. that's kind of aspirational. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that would be, that would be the advice. Yeah. There, there's something I want to uh, lift up about the concert. <coughs> um, Confest that's coming up in August 2020 um, in on Oahu in Hawaii is that it's a really interesting shift for Casa because it's the first time when we're going to be in a place where indigenous culture mm -hmm. can be centered. Mm -hmm. Because here mm -hmm. on the continent, we talk a lot about immigration and migration, and everything shifts when we go to Hawaii, mm. and even for uh, board members and conference planners to figure out, uh, to understand, not figure out, but to truly understand what does that mean, and how do we <coughs> need to um, check, our, check our own behavior <laughs> to truly be in solidarity and truly center indigenous leadership. Uh, it's, a, it's a really beautiful new challenge. Uh, and it's also gonna be full of some really complex conversations about indigeneity and colonization and immigration and all of our various very complicated histories. Um, I, I dream of a day actually when the National Black Theater Festival would dare to land in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just think about what you're saying is that the power. I wanted to add two things that I learned from the Institute of Directing and Ensemble Creation. One was about community agreements. Mm -hmm. the, that would be another piece of advice community agreements, and the other thing that happened that was profound there was that the non-melanated conversation didn't have that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you explain what does that mean for <laughs> viewers? <laughs> the white people weren't in the room. Mm. The, the, the thought of them wasn't there. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking about ourselves only, 
And so my advice would be to push in that direction as far as you can, to leave the dominant culture out of the room. And then they, that's a way of also just recentering everything. And let me just say, that's so interesting to me that you just said that, because actually we did have white folks in the room, but we had white allies who were committed yeah. mm -hmm. to being allies yeah. in that space, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so it, it doesn't, again, it's about who, who's at the center yes. and who's, who is their space for. Yeah. And, uh, and, it, and it doesn't have to be exclusionary. It has to be about we're all showing up committed yeah. to this. Um, and I mean, not mission. necessarily physically, but the conversations That's that right. we have mm -hmm. are not always about what the others are doing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to open it up to some uh, questions and comments from all of you who've been listening so patiently. I'm not sure if we can have somebody help with um, running a mic. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we, we have about another uh, 25 minutes to have some conversation. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I know that we're here talking about, you know, whatever we're going to call it, coalition, but it, uh, I would like to know when we're going to have the American POC coalition, mm -hmm. because that sounds like what we really want mm -hmm. in general. I think we're just right now at the beginning of that, but um, but it, it, there are like larger questions that as people of color in this country that we want to be able to um, rely on each other for, and and you know a lot of what Idris was saying about not doing it in in like the conversation isn't centered on uh, you know uh, white culture white uh, uh, in terms of who is holding power, but it, it's like, what are we building for ourselves? And so I think that that is something that um, uh, beyond like building a coalition where you're in affinity with, with a group that you have like uh, all this commonality with and you wanna do some uh, work, that there is also that other part about reaching across coalitions in order to build something larger. And I think that's the same idea that we mostly get from our own cultures and communities because we work so collaboratively together. And so it's kind of like ingrained, I think, in a lot of us to do that. Um, um, but I think there are, are like uh, aspirations we've heard from, you know, Idris about the work that they're doing around um, around building that also. And so I think that that's that's something that I think is a big desire of a lot of folks in the room. You know, I want to say too that there's a little bit of trepidation in that concept because um, it does sort of recenter <laughs> ourselves as minorities in a way, mm -hmm. as opposed to mm -hmm. when we're at the Black Dutch Black Theater Festival, it's us. Mm -hmm. And that I think it would want to be an organic. Um, and centered around real work and not a place where um, funding is parceled out uh, or that kind of thing where it can so, so easily go so wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and also it could go wrong because we don't fully understand yeah. each other's histories and current political realities, yeah. cultures, and challenges yet, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's so much work in that aspirational goal. There's so much work to do. Uh, I mean, even within an, an identity group, which isn't really an identity group, it's a, yeah. <laughs> but, such as Middle Eastern and North African, it's, a, it's full of so many identities, or Asian yeah. American, or Latinx, right? Or, uh, or all the different identities in blackness, right? Yeah. There's so much learning to do from each other within, and we need that time, and we need uh, 
that time to build community and to build collective power. And then we also need to do that work across communities in a way, I mean, we carry stereotypes about each other as people of color, mm -hmm. often it, we have, you know, we have racism in, we have anti-blackness mm -hmm. in Middle Eastern communities, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not yeah. gonna lie about yeah. that, right? Yeah. Classism too. Right, and, and, and of course, other isms, classism, ableism, all these things, right? But um, I'm, I'm excited about the aspiration, and I also wanna be like really grounded about like the work yeah. that we need to do yeah. to do it well so yeah. it doesn't just go haywire. Um, so I mean, in the same spirit of this conversation, um, I really appreciate, I, I love the idea of, of uh, shifting the center, of, um, of bypassing the white theater companies and turning to each other, um, and um, considering uh, a decolonized, creating a decolonized space for making theater uh, amongst all of our communities and, and having these conversations with each other, uh, a decolonized anti-racist space. Yeah. yeah, so I just wanted to, the complication we have here too in, in the Bay Area is that a lot of what we're calling white theater culture is actually run by people of color. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. you, yeah, so yeah. What, do you, what do you call a book? It's, it's the San Francisco Mind Group of Black Theater Company because <coughs> they have black leadership and they, their plays skewer towards African American ideas sometimes because of who's in the room, but that's just a little yeah. bummer. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have it. I, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, hi. So I had a question. Um, I loved what you all were talking about in terms of like activating regional activity, mm -hmm. um, and I had a question about transparency and accountability between like a regional level and a national level and yeah. like how that structure looks for, e for each of you. If you have any insight, that would be great. Yeah, um, so, uh, the, so before I had, was part of the LTC steering committee, I was a co-founder along with many folks in Los Angeles of the Latino Theater Alliance of LA. Um, and we kind of modeled ourselves after the um, Alliance of Latino Theater, uh, theater artists, Alta Chicago. Um, and I think, so um, their satellites, of, we have a lot of crossover. Um, when, when I was at the LTA LA, we were, we were just on our own. It, like the, there was a plugging in to the LTC through individual members who would keep us surprised of what was going on at the national level, but we were, we were holding our own convenings, we were meeting each other in LA in our different spaces and seeing the work. Um, so they were running in parallel, or it, they're, right now we're talking about what, what it looked like for the LTC to convene a round table of the alliances where they're at now. Um, a lot of them are in transition. Um, several of us who were there in LA who were leading those conversations have gone off to do other things in different parts of the country. Um, and so, and, and in Chicago the leadership changed over as well, and so we're, we're reaching out to see what it would look like to bring each other together, or to bring everyone together on a call. But um, there, isn't, there isn't a formal tether from LTC mm -hmm. to the regional alliances, except for the fact that we're a lot of the same folks in both rooms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to also say that for, for us, we don't have like a, a set structure in terms of regionally, because we're working as kind of a, a national uh, board, um, we did want to kind of really look at, at regions as a way to um, keep in contact with our, our membership or with folks who were interested in what we were doing. Um, but it, it's, it's not, you know, not something that exists right now. Um, and when you ask about accountability, I think, you know, that takes structure, um, meaning people, persons to, to, and a clear, like, what is the role, what is the goal, um, in terms of, like, the <coughs> national, national part of the work. It's like, what are you hoping to achieve? And then the, the last part, which is really hard to get to, is how do you evaluate that? Mm -hmm. You know, in order to, to have a system of accountability, mm -hmm. you know, in a general sense, you have to be able to assess it, like, um, according to a standard. And so that's a really hard thing for organizations that don't have infrastructure or don't have like, you know, like an evaluation kind of rubric for their work. Um, I think, you know, uh, uh, I, 
I'm sure you've you've gone through this with LTC much more than like anyone at UNT Center. Yeah. 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 I would agree. Yeah, I would say that there's uh, not yet. I think that's part of what Monica and I were talking about is about working on the region because there hasn't even been in the Black Theater Coalition's a real recognition mm -hmm. of regionalism. Mm -hmm. Everybody's sort of been lumped into the idea of black theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes uh, there, there are companies, I think our company included, that feels a little left out of the conversation because it's, it doesn't include queer work often. Mm -hmm. It doesn't include mm -hmm. African work, mm -hmm. of which we're, that's a strong, uh, our company is strongly Nigerian, queer Nigerian. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so where do we go? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, just uh, to offer a different example, Adriana Gaviria on the steering committee uh, championed the Miami convening, and there hadn't been an energy to convene regionally the folks in South Florida, and um, that I'm aware of, or that folks are aware of the in that Latinx space, and so. Um, specifically theater, because I think that there had been convenings that were all arts, but specifically Latinx theater. And um, there we, going back to the idea of you leave something behind when, when you convene in a space, um, folks there were energized to form a regional alliance. And um, you know we, we just have to be prepared to leave the necessary tools that we have for them to, to self-organize. Yeah. Yeah. Another question? Hi. Um, Thank you all so much for, for, for being here and, and for sharing your experiences. I think it's, um, the convening has really come alive. Uh, and, I, and I wish so much that Shannon was a part of this conversation. Yes. Yeah. I think yeah. um, the, the, you know, the, the experiences of Native artists is, is so important to this conversation. Mm -hmm. um, my question, um, I'm a writer uh, based in Los Angeles. And uh, I wanted to know, um, two-part question, uh, what your recommendations were for like uh, upcoming conferences, I know CASA is coming up, so if there's any other events or um, gatherings that you might want uh, to shout out or, or just share, um, and um, perhaps, uh, why did I say perhaps, um, maybe some, some uh, theaters that you could recommend uh, for us to submit to so that we can, we can continue this, this um, crossover. Well, there's, uh, there's the BTC, the Black Theater Commons, is happening at Dartmouth in the summer of okay. 2020. And so is the Black Theater Network. Um, it's happening in, oh, I'm not, I'm forgetting. I'll remember before we leave, hopefully. Um, and also, there's a Women's Theater Festival happening in San Francisco at Bravo. I'm not sure the date of that, but I know that they're March and April. March and April, 2020. Great, thank you. Uh, so, what I said earlier, we produced 11 convenings in six years. Um, we, we had a, a separate strategic planning meeting last year in, in 2018 at um, Princeton during the Fornes Symposium that we produced, and um, there, there was a recommendation that came out of that to... Stop convening. <laughs> stop. Um, <laughs> to, to have a, a, a longer a longer throw in between convenings, yeah. and so um, our our next convening will be close to the LTC. There's a we're doing a creative renewal retreat that's uh, for the steering committee and advisory mm -hmm. committee folks, so that we can realign ourselves as we enter a new generation of steering committee, where the a lot many of the founding the people who were there from the are in the beginning are not there uh, on the committee now, and. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to tell you one that the LTC will be doing in 2021, but we'll have to leave it at that for now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, as far as like opportunities, um, well, I think I get to you. I think I get to you. Uh, really good ones, which are the National Performance Network is holding their um, annual uh, conference, um, December 10th through 13th in New Orleans. Um, as I spoke about, like it, it's all, all, there are lots of um, cultural, what I call cultural centers of color, um, who attend that conference. It's really uh, amazing uh, this network, which which really supports uh, a lot of artists of color, 
a lot of touring work, and also um, folks who fall into kind of what you would say is like really unseen and marginalized work. And so um, I would check it out in tn.web. Um, the conference is open to anyone who wants to apply for that, and we're, we're gonna be rocking that in December. The other one I mentioned was the, the uh, Confest, Hawaii 2020, and that is going on from August 7th through the 16th. It is also open to everybody, um, just in terms of there's going to be like an application process coming up for the submission of work and panels. Mm -hmm. The panels, you know, panels and work um, as, as broadly defined, um, <coughs> um, it is not like specifically Focus. I would say, like the conference is not specifically focused on any any one thing, except that we do know that we are highlighting the work of um, uh, Native Hawaiian artists and Pacific Islander artists, but also to talk about coalition building there in uh, Hawaii and for the Pacific Rim. And but there is a there's a lot of room for these kind of cross-cultural, cross-coalition conversations within that. So there, we are taking, we're gonna be taking proposals for all of that starting fairly soon. And I think registration is open and we have a, we have a job for someone in Hawaii, if anyone wants to <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of rock that with us. Um, I also, I just, I wanna shout out Kata to be, it has a history of being inclusive of Middle Eastern uh, theater and um, yes, because we in 2016 when it was at uh, Oregon Shakespeare Festival, the National Asian American Theater Festival included a pre-conference um, that focused on our communities and you know it's complicated because we were looking at in that case the frame of Southwest and Central Asia, um, which of course then leaves out North Africa. So at the last convening in Chicago, we had. Um, a panel that was uh, an open plenary for the whole confest uh, that that was more inclusive of um, Middle Eastern and North African um, artists. So Kata has really been uh, very mindful about being inclusive of our community and I think wants to continue to be uh, a convening space um, for those who can get themselves to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, so do we have other, yeah, there's, I see I have Tracy one. over there, oh. yes, um, and then we'll do. I found the BTN, for those who are interested, has a call for papers that's in July in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And I think just if you recognize that it, if it leaves out North Africa, and then we pick it up, right? And then North yeah. Africa ends up in the black theater that we, yeah. I think we just keep our eyes open for that intersectionality, mm -hmm. sure. that all of our dreams will come true. So we've been talking a lot about like our ideas for whatever our group will be and about um, advocating for uh, work for artists um, and also for creating greater visibility. And I want to see if there, other than the convenings, are there initiatives or actions that you guys have taken in your coalition that will be successful or not successful? And just kind of brainstorming some ideas that you guys have done that maybe we can borrow from. We used to publish uh, a blog called Cafe Onda. <laughs> um, that was that was another initiative that came out of those early meetings uh, that has um, been absorbed into Greater HowlRound and the HowlRound Journal. Um, but that that's an idea. We it was a volunteer editorial board. Um, we did raise money to contract out some uh, edit, for an editor um, who was Georgina Escobar uh, for a time. And um, that was inter that was an interesting thing where we like where we set the parameters for the conversation that we were having online where that could be disseminated. Uh, the hashtag still makes it into all of our convenings. <laughs> hashtag got there on that, but <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I think we're about to start a blog because you have to run it right now. Right? <laughs> You're the best <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> share this responsibility, um, <laughs> important responsibility. But um, I think I've just been voluntold. It's also yeah about building up that, that kind of online presence. Um, uh, you know, hopefully with the new ED, with really focusing. 
focusing on what are the, how, how is the continuity carried out between the live interactions, or um, we always use other conferences in order to try to get together too. Mm -hmm. And um, so attending, you know, uh, attending like the, uh, the encuentros or attending, you know, any, any types of opportunities where uh, a group of us can continue to build, we usually do this, we would love to kind of formalize our little Turing circuit. Mm -hmm. um, what I was gonna say for artists coming from California, of course, uh, you know, uh, if you go to CCI Arts, um, there's, a, there's a quick grant program which for artists and companies, you can apply for professional development opportunities and, and have it uh, somewhat subsidized. So I would encourage everybody in the room to, you know, as you hear about all of these opportunities and to kind of expand your learning to really think about it in that way. Yeah. If you're building a coalition, it makes sense for you to attend some of these to see uh, what it looks like in action. Yeah. And so for California, yeah. we're, we're, we're kind of lucky because we have some resources. Yeah, yeah so uh, the question was some things that worked and some things that didn't work. Um, so I just want to speak a little bit to what was failure. Um, <laughs> And we used to have a magazine too. Should be allowed to. A slick, shiny, we used to, magazines, fail, fail, fail. <laughs> <laughs> we used to have a beautiful black uh, theater network. We used to have a beautiful magazine called Black Mask. That's now like Jet and Ebony. It's like, you know, you can find it at the library, but no more. And it hasn't necessarily been replaced by online. Mm. But I, I spoke earlier about uh, some coalitions that don't exist anymore. And I think that uh, the lessons I took from one of those was uh, uh, the one at at, uh, Penn, at uh, the August Wilson Center in particular, part of that was the August Wilson Center was also in trouble. And so we weren't able to gather that there again anymore. But also the, the, um, the steering committee reached out and there, were, there was cross-cultural coalition building and uh, Nacho was there, the Asian American Theater Association from New York was there, and that was the first big kind of blow up. It's like, why are they here? What are we doing? I thought we were talking about us, and then these really uncomfortable conversations about black theater were, in, were at the table, and uh, the contribution from Nata was, was just like, gone by the wayside, and that, that kind of idea. And I think out of that, that one of the reasons that didn't happen was that there was too much disagreement in that room around just what umbrella we were under, mm -hmm. about who we were and who should be in the room, mm -hmm. and who was, and, and not just Nata, but like, even myself, like why are you here? Why are the academics here? Why are there, so there was, so I think um, a really clear uh, vision is really, and, and an outcome for the next step is really important. I think we have time for one more question and then we'll wrap up. Thank you so much for all your insights. It was so informative. Um, I was wondering if you could comment uh, and share your experiences with your kind of pre-planning uh, before you had it formal leadership and funds or a space uh, or a convening, how did you get that all like started, started? Was, was it, did you start with an online presence? Did you start with fundraising? Did you start by becoming a nonprofit? Anything about pre-structure um, that made this all really sustainable? I'll just quickly, one of BTN's strengths was connecting itself to the National Black Theater Festival. Mm -hmm. So every, every National Black Theater Festival, which meets every other year, is preceded by a BTN mm -hmm. conference, and then BTN has their regular conference in between years. Mm -hmm. So I think they gathered membership, visibility, and continuity through connecting themselves to the larger festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, pre, the, the, in, this, in, in a similar way to the, how we're talking about a coalition, a, a co like a cross coalition, <coughs> there's, there's so much that's just kind of like tending to the ground so that it's fertile enough for something to spring up that's so mm -hmm. kind of like 
hard to name because it, it, I think um, if folks were gathering under a tree at TCG or at APA at a specific lunch table or, yeah. you know, like these are the, the ways. Um, and, and then, um, I, I mean, when Karen uh, Zacarias convened those folks in, in DC, um, and it was just eight folks who had this big dream uh, for, to, for the Boston convening, or what became the Boston convening, it, it, that just like, there was something ready to spring up. And so, um, I mean, looking around at this room, I feel like it's happening. Um, Ooh. I, Food? Yeah. <laughs> food, I think, not for nothing, like, you know, food, put some snacks out and invite some people. Because <laughs> the food will get them. Yeah. I think that, that's really where it kind of starts. Uh, the, the pre stuff is, I, I, I think that, um, I, I think you've done a lot of the pre stuff. I, I was able to attend the uh, Theaters of Color um, Coalition Building that was here a week ago. Yeah, two weeks ago. Um, which is, uh, a, and a lot of the findings in terms of uh, your steering committee or your, your um, the surveys that you were doing tells me that you've done your homework. You, you kind of you know, who, you know who's in the room. Although potentially what you're doing is you're identifying other people who are not there who you, mm -hmm. who you definitely want to reach out to. Mm -hmm. So I think one, you've done like an awesome amount of groundwork on that. As far as like the structure of it, um, I, I would just say uh, CASA came out of a lot of those uh, companies, those original companies holding pieces of meaning they would house the conference or they would house a conversation and it's pretty much amongst uh, looking at what are the, the, the collective assets that people have. It's like who can share out this piece. And so when we've been able to convene in, in Minneapolis, Juju, Pangea, and, and companies there who were in CASA, it's really, through it, them kind of hosting us. And so, um, and then yes, food, food is the second part. Um, coffee. And drinks, and mm -hmm. coffee. Coffee. <laughs> food, drinks, and coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, so uh, at the same time that the meeting was happening at Arena, the Kinan Valdez uh, was traveling to different regions and putting out a call. There's, there's an email address called Latino Alliance Now, and, and, and don't email it because it, nobody logs into it anymore. <laughs> but, but the password was shared with the folks of the different regions. And so, and so there was, you know how like people are archiving their emails so fast? Um, it was like a recognizable email that people would know what it was about. It would share out the notes um, and different regions were able to log into it and able to kind of like go through and see like, oh, did this work? Or like, how, what, what agenda did they use? And so we were sharing a lot of information just through a shared email account. Um, that was that was something that just came to mind. Ooh, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> wow, thank you. Um, so we have to wrap up, um, but I want to give a shout out to um, Taranj and Golden Thread for hosting yeah. this. Unfortunately, couldn't stay the whole time, but it was so important to have her with us uh, for the beginning. And please give a hand to all of our panelists. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everyone, this brings us to the end of our gathering. Um, yay! <laughs> Uh, a lot of notes, the walls of the annex are covered in notes and to-do lists and um, next steps, uh, some potential names for our coalition um, organization. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for trusting us with this conversation. Thank you for 
sharing your expertise, your knowledge, um, and being generous with your ideas. Uh, just so you know, the steering committee will be meeting this afternoon to basically draw up a plan for next steps. We have already kind of decided that we're going to have an online presence, so I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later. And the, um, the need for communication with the group um, has been uh, brought up more than once, so I think that's going to be a priority for us as well. So um, stay tuned. We will be in touch. Um, Party. Oh, party on! <laughs> Will the annex be open for our little request? Those little tickets? Yeah. Yes, so I will open up the annex um, for some food sharing and snacking and final words of wisdom that you may want to contribute to the walls and to, for folks to pick up your uh, belongings. Right. Anything else? Right. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, brilliant uh, idea! Yeah. Brilliant yeah. idea. Thanks to HowlRound. We want to thank HowlRound and say goodbye to everybody on HowlRound. Uh, and yeah, everyone gather on stage and let's take a group photo. We're already. Well, if we have the lights on, then we're that way.